Update TV KPM Salam sejahtera anda sedang menonton Road to Success SPM 2021 bersama dengan saya Sean Stevens selaku host anda. Baiklah sebelum kita mula saya nak ingatkan kepada anda semua untuk sentiasa mengikut SOP yang ditetapkan bagi menangani penularan COVID-19 seperti pakai penutup muka pastikan pakai dengan betul meliputi daripada atas hidung ke bawah dagu serta kerap cuci tangan dengan air dan sabun. Pakailah hand sanitizer ataupun gel pembasmi kuman dan juga pastikan jarak di antara satu sama lain tidak kurang daripada 1 meter apabila berada di tempat awam. Dan oleh sebab uh, untuk hari ini adanya uh, ataupun berlakunya, uh, bukan berlakunya tetapi ini adalah program dalam bahasa Inggeris. So izinkan saya untuk berbahasa Inggeris untuk keseluruhan program ini. So okay everyone who's watching right now, what's going to happen is... As you know, the lesson will be in English, but let's have a look at the teacher's profile. From the profile, you already know who she is. Please put your hands together virtually for Miss Sim. Hi, Hi. Miss Sim. Hi. Very good evening to you. Hi, Sean. How are you feeling so far? Um, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as you know, uh, for those of you watching at home, uh, well, the distance between me and the teacher is at least one meter. But let's further or let's uh, practice some more SOPs here. On the table, we have the hand sanitizer. How about we All go right. to the table? Yeah, sure. Again, maintaining distance of at least one meter. Uh, okay. um, you can uh, use the hand sanitizer first, followed by me. All right. Of course, yes, it's very important for us to keep our hands clean uh, to stop the spread of COVID-19. So uh, before we continue, how about you introduce yourself once again to the uh, audience at home? Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Sim Chayan. You can call me Miss Sim. And I'm a teacher from SMJK Yukon. And how long have yes. you been teaching so far? Um, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. All right. And um, for this topic for today, what are we touching on? Um, we are going to talk about uh, email writing. All right. So writing about email is mm -hmm. also part of an SPM uh, paper. But this is something new, right? Yeah, it's in a new format. Ah, yes. so is it easy to score or is it difficult? What, what would um, you say? For email, I think it's the easiest to yeah. score. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the challenge is students have to finish three essays in one hour and 30 minutes. All right, and hopefully yeah. with your guidance, we are able to do just yeah. that. But uh, how about we take a look at what we have or what the students have to say about this subject. My name is Fua Ji Chang and I am from SMJK Yokwan. I would like to share something that struggling me when writing an email. After reading the instruction from the test paper, sometimes I have no idea how to start an email. I am not sure how to begin my sentences in an appropriate way. Besides, I have problem with linking my sentences into a proper writing. I always stuck for a long time to think about how to continue my writing. I do hope that I can solve this problem before sitting for my SPM exam. I think one of the challenges of writing an email for me is sometimes I don't understand the title and the question asked in the paper. Therefore, I cannot answer the question directly. And it makes time for me to think about it. I may not have enough time. Not only that, Sometimes I will miss some important point in the question and thus forget to answer them and miss the score for those part. I guess that's all for me. Thank you. And there you have it, the opinions from uh, well, the students who will be taking this paper uh, later for their SPM. Now, uh, obviously it's not just the both of us, right Miss Sim? We also have our special guests who are online with us today. Let's have a look at who yes. they are. Hi! Hi everyone, there we go, we have the uh, wonderful faces of our students who are online right now. So what I'm going to do is, yes that's right, continue smiling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mention your names uh, one by one, so please introduce yourself. So I'm going to start off first with uh, Kuang Zhe. Hi, my name is Kuang Zhe and I'm from SMJK Yokuan. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you feeling today? Good. Good, huh? Wow, very uh, short responses. I think you're nervous as well. Or maybe probably excited. You want to keep all your words for your answers later. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to uh, Maha Lechumi. Hi. 
Hi, hi, Mahalishmi from SMJK Okwan. All right, maybe you can tell me one thing that you like about the English subject. I, I like English subject because I like the language. <laughs> all right, all right, thank you very much. Uh, next, we have uh, Jing Xian. Hi, I'm Jing Xian, also from SMJK Yokwan. All right, and have you eaten? Yes, I what, have. What, what you ate today? Roti chanai. Roti chanai, <laughs> yes, that's actually one of my top favorite food. Huh? Thank you so much. We're in the same group, yeah, same, same gang. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Ke Ching. Hi, my name is Pan Ke Ching. I'm from SNJK Yokwan. All right, and. Um, what do you expect to learn today? Or do you really know what we're going to touch on today? Uh, the writing of email. Uh, do you think it's difficult for you? I think it's not difficult for me. <laughs> All right. Yes, and hopefully with the guidance of uh, Miss Sim, everyone can also feel the same. Because technically, after the explanation, even I yeah. went through the explanation just briefly with Miss Sim, I think it's something that everyone can, can actually pick up pretty quick. Thank you so much, Kuching. Next, we have Jiamin. Hi, I'm Jamin from SMJK Yokuan. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. And I, I noticed that some of you are wearing blue. Is that a special color for... Are you a prefect or a librarian? Prefect. Prefect. Okay. Is it difficult being a prefect at your school? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you so much. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, King Yi. Hi, my name is Yong King Yi from SMJK Yokuan. All right, thank you, King Yi. And uh, uh, relating back to the question from uh, Jiamin, uh, do you find it difficult to be a prefect at your school? No. No, uh? okay, so that's two for two. All right, thank you so much. And final question is, are you ready for our lesson for today? Give me a thumbs up if you are. All right, love the energy, love your smiles. Keep it going because we're going to take a short break and be back for you for Road to Success SPM 2021. Stay tuned. TV KPM Pilih kuarantin di sini atau kuarantin di sini Pilihan di tangan anda Eh eh wo masih nak keluar lagi duduk rumah je lah Ingat, elakkan tiga C. Crowded place. Kawasan sesak, elak. Confined space. Kawasan sempit, elak. Close conversation. Jaga jarak bila bercakap. Kalau kita elakkan tiga C ini, susah virus nak tersebar. Patuhi SOP. Ikut syarat PKPP. Lindungi orang berisiko tinggi. Jaga penjarakan fizikal. COVID-19 tak pilih mangsa. Awak boleh kena, awak boleh kena. Semua boleh kena. Ingat, sama-sama. Kita jaga kita. Budayakan norma baru. Bersama-sama kita putuskan rantaian COVID-19. Didik TV KPM In my point of view, the most important aspect to be aware of when writing an email is the content or information we need to share with this specific person. For example, when we are writing an email to somebody about an event that we have organized, then the purpose location, date, and time of when the event will start have to be included in the email. If any of these components is not mentioned in the email, then the people who receive our email will be unable to join the event, even if they are interested in it. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. And we are back for Road to Success SPM 2021 together with me, Sean Siren, and also Miss Sim. For the subject, of course, uh, for English. Now, just during the break, uh, or before the break, I was actually just interviewing a bit the uh, students who are online. And I came to find out, uh, you know, I was asking them about them being prefects and whatnot, and they said it's a, it's a wonderful job, very easy to do. They are saying that because I came to find out that Miss Sim is actually the discipline teacher, which makes her in charge of prefects. Isn't that true, Miss Sim? Yeah. <laughs> okay, no wonder they are like, yes, yes, everything is good, everything is good. Yeah. Okay, uh, oh, Mahal Achumi, you're nodding a bit too much. Huh? <laughs> okay, any head prefects here? No, huh? Normally, mm. Form 5, is uh, they already hand over their, 
their yeah. their title, right? Yes. Okay, okay. I remember when I was a prefect, it was also a wonderful time. Hopefully, my uh, discipline teacher is also watching, so they know that they did a good job, lah. <laughs> and yes, it's good also to have the discipline teacher as an English teacher, so that she can ensure that you learn the correct way. And yes. Today is on writing emails, isn't that right? Yes. And I think yes. it's very, very important because even now in the digital age, writing something as simple as an email can all it's very, very important whether you're applying for yes. a job or whether um, you know you want to just write to a friend or if you want to inquire anything regarding an event or even lessons. It's very important to know the proper format. And today we'll be learning just that. So right now, Miss Sim, over to you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So today is actually um form four revisions. And we are going to use Form 4 textbook, which is uh, on Module 6 with the title Timeout. And I'm going to focus on the writing paper, which is on your English 1119, Paper 2. Okay, so let's see the theme of today. All right, and um, before I go to the themes, this is the new format of SPM. Oh. All right, because the new format of SPM, we aligned with the CFR. And this CFR is also uh, means a common European framework of reference. Oh. So we refer to them, okay, so it's okay. standardized. So um, for paper one, we have our reading paper, which is, uh, we have five parts, 40 marks, one hour and 30 minutes. Okay. And then for writing, we have three parts, 60 marks, one hour and 30 minutes. Oh, this is the one where you mentioned about Yes, this is the one where we are going hours. to focus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we have paper three, which is speaking. We have three parts as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, with a total of 24 months in 13 minutes. Okay. And the last will be our listening paper, which is uh, four parts. And then it consists of uh, 13 marks overall. Mm -hmm. And then it is also took like roughly 40 minutes. Okay. Yes. All right. So this is the new format. So let's move on to our learning objective of uh, today. So by the end of these lessons, I hope that uh, pupils can remember at least two important parts in writing, um, a letter or email. Okay. And then for the second ones, pupils can reply to or give at least three information to us in a letter or email. All right. So uh, if we focus on the textbooks, for the teams, we will touch on uh, people and culture. Okay. And then the content standard of our scheme of work will be writing 4.2, so that students can communicate with appropriate language, form, and style. And then for the language focus, we're going to focus on semi-formal letter or email. Yep. Okay, because they're almost the same for letter or email. Okay. And then asking for information and some tips on writing email in SPM English Paper 2. And our reference will be the Form 4 textbook on page 86 and 87. So people who's watching at home or students who's yes, watching at you home, you can have your textbook with you. Okay. It's easier for you to look at it. You can look at page uh, 81 first. There will be the title, uh, Topic 6, Module yep. 6. Mm -hmm. And then you can refer to page 86. We will touch on a semi-former uh, email. Okay. It is actually a letter in the textbook, yeah. but I try to modify it in the SPM format ah. so that students will get used to it. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. good, that's good. So like I say, we are going to focus on writing paper and we are going to focus uh, basically on part one. So this part one is short communicative message, which normally they will have email. And it is, consists of 20 marks okay. and uh, students have to write roughly about 80 words. So it's not that long, just yeah. a very short one. Okay. Okay, so before we start about talking uh, how to write an email, yeah. let's have a little warm up about what do you enjoy doing in your free time because the topic is about time out, right? About yeah. the free time, uh, during the free time, what would you do? So maybe Sean can answer first. Oh, <laughs> like, yes, what, what would yes. you do during your free time? Uh, during my free time, I actually try to find time to exercise, to work okay. out. Because there are times, I mean, I love to eat. And I don't really take care of what I put into my mouth. Uh -huh. So it can be rice and curry and fried chicken and chocolates and, you know, all sorts of stuff. So I'll try to find time at least three times a week. Uh, to do uh, to do to do an exercise to sweat out a bit so that I am able or I can eat without feeling guilty. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. How about you, Miss Sim? Um, a lot. I have a lot of things that I really want to do if I have free times. But yeah. normally I would just like do some cooking at home. Oh, yeah. 
or maybe uh, just panting. Sorry? Panting. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Panting, yeah. Oh, all right. That's so nice. let's listen to our students. So you can talk about sports or hobbies, like I say, panting just now, or entertainment, mm -hmm. or about family time, whether you like to spend with your family. How about Kingi? Can you share with us what would you do during your free time? Yes, of course, teacher. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I would like to play basketball in my free time because it helps me to enhance my self-esteem and regulate my stressful emotion as well. Oh, I wow. see. So, can you basketball like basketball? player in the house, b-ball. Nice. <laughs> what position do you play? Um, center. 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 I think that's the person who runs the most. Huh? Mm, Actually, for because he's I, very tall as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you able to, to dunk? Do a slam dunk? No. Oh, no. Huh? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Good, okay. good. Sorry. Over to you, Miss Yes. Yeah. How about mm. the next students? Anyone would like to share what would you enjoy during your free time? Maha? Uh, me, Miss Sim. Okay. Yeah. If I have free time, I would like to do gardening because it helps me boost up my mood and connect with plants. Besides that, it is a great form of exercise for our physical health too. Oh. That's also that's actually a very, very interesting uh, hobby because I try to do gardening. I have uh -huh. a few plants at home. I mean, I stay in a condo, so it's uh -huh. not that much of space. Uh, but the problem is uh, most of my plants somehow end up uh, not alive. <laughs> yeah, so uh, probably I'll, uh, maybe afterwards I can ask uh, Maha for some tips on how I can keep my plants alive so that it looks greener inside. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maha. Yeah. All right, okay. How about next? Anyone would like Can to you share your free time? Charlene? Yeah, okay. Yeah, as I will see for my SPN examination this year, I have to attend many tuition classes to mm -hmm. improve my study. So I do not have enough time to accompany my family. Mm. Plus, if I have free time, I would like to spend it with my family. For example, I will have a meal with my family or chit chat with them or uh, exercise together. That's all. All right. Oh, okay. wow, that's, that's actually a very good thing. Yeah. Because you know, like sometimes uh, some people, even though they're they are, they are busy and then when it comes mm -hmm. to family time, sometimes they, especially nowadays, they tend to use their phone a lot. So yes. I have to actually check with Jamin's mother whether she's really telling the truth or just telling everyone, <laughs> ah, don't spend too much time on your phone, okay? But I think, <laughs> ah, Maha, yeah. you're laughing, ah? <laughs> wow, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jamin. But yes, it's actually a very, very yes. good, uh, important point. I mean, now, because you're preparing for your SPI, you've got lots yeah. of tuition classes, you want to make sure that you're well-equipped. Uh, you know, you say you, you suffer a bit now so that you can enjoy later. Very good one, Jamin. Thank you. All right, thanks. Who would like to share? Jingxian? Jingxian? Yes, I would love to, sh I would okay. love to share with yes. you guys. Yes, during my free time, I mostly read novels at home. Oh, read novels. So what kind of novels do you read? Well, most of the time, I read fantasy and mystery types of novels. Oh, okay. Ooh, Thank you. Wow, Mystery that's... types of novels. Yeah, yeah that's okay, nice. That's that's nice. nice. Nancy Drew, I think Nancy Drew is yeah, considered last a... time, I think they... Yeah. I don't really know they know about Nancy Drew Nancy or not. Drew. But I think last this time, is our time, I do check the list, you know, I make yeah. sure that I have read all the ser series of uh, Nancy Drew. And... Yes, yes. Yeah, so I've, I love I've that known, series. I've known a Nancy Drew, but I never really... I wasn't much of a reading person, unfortunately. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> all right, uh, please okay. continue, yes. Yeah. Then the last, Kongzhu? Uh, during my free time, I usually play computer games with my online friends. Moreover, I also like to watch movies with my family members. Oh, okay. Ooh, computer games. Online uh, computer games. Do you play on your mobile phone or on your computer? I prefer computer. Computer. Uh, okay. I can't say much about computer because I usually play on my mobile phone. But uh, let's not go into that. Let's go back to the <laughs> lessons at hand. All yes. right. Okay. So let's uh, move on, right? So let's look at the next slide. Okay, so this will be on page 81. You will find out the uh, module 6 with the title timer and then you can see this little boy. I think he's also playing games, computer games or some sort of it. Okay, so we are focusing on writing, right? So let's look at when we talk about writing an email, normally students will ask like how to start an email or how to end an email or how to get the information or look for the information that they really want to put into their email. So let's uh, see. For example, this is your practice okay, in your textbooks as well. It's on page 86. If you look at it, it's exactly the same. 
Okay, so let's look at this one. We have this Putrajaya Century Bite Ride uh, on Sunday, 16 June. So it is about, I think is a um, cycling race or something like that. So I want you to put in mind, like, one question, would you like to take part in a cycling race like this to raise money for charity? Because I think that it is to help the HFM raise money to fight against heart disease. So would you like to take part in some sort of race to uh, raise money? Why or why not? And another question will be, if let's say you're interested in it, what kind of information would you like to know about the race before you make your decisions? So maybe I can ask like one or two students um, to answer each question. Maybe the first one, would you like to take part in a cycling race like this? Why or why not? Can I hear the opinions of uh, Jingxian maybe? Jingxian? Yes, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. for, me, for me, I will personally will participate in this kind of races. Well, not only can I help to raise money for charity, I can also expand my social circle. Well, this is because I think that it's easier to befriend someone who has the same interest as I have. Okay, thank you. How about Jamin? Jamin, would you like to join this? In my opinion, I think I will not participate in this cycling race. Although the event is quite effective to raise money for charity, but I'm not that good in cycling, so oh, I will I not see. participate in it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, but... But so you will not participate in this, but would you help out? Would you help out? Yes, of course. Okay, yes, yeah, you will help out, but you will not participate in the cycling with me. She's not good yeah, in it's, that. It's for a good cause, yes. Yeah. Good cause. Okay, so how about what kind of information would you like to get? Uh, let's hear from uh, King Yi. King Yi, what kind of information would you like to get before you make your decisions? Um, for me, I would like to ask the, according to the racer safety. For instance, whether or not the relative period, including the relative classes, helmets and globe were provided to the racer or not. And the other things that I would like to know is the root condition of the racing track. Ensuring that track is even is very important because photos could lead to dangerous accident during the race. Okay, so safety comes first, right? How about Keqing? Keqing, what is your opinion on this? What kind of information do you would like to know? Mm. I think I would like to ask the about the place that. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it near to your um, house? Is it? Yes, and um, another information I would like to ask is about the whether the horse has prepared a, any equipment for the races. If mm -hmm. the horse has prepared everything for races, that I would like to join this because it's very convenient. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so we have to move on here real quick to the next one. This one you can see on your textbook as well. Okay, so this is the reply from Ayman Maggots, right? And he's writing to Miss Summit. Okay, we can see here, I want you to keep in mind, like how does Ayman address the person he's writing to? You can refer um, to this, the first part here. And what kind of information does Ayman give about himself? Maybe you can look through at the second paragraph. Yeah? And then what information does Ayman ask for? This is very important at this paragraph. I think it's the third paragraph. And does he use direct or indirect questions? Direct question is something like, how much is this? This is direct question. Yeah. Like indirect questions, you will be in a more polite way like, may, may I know or can I know how much this is? Okay. okay, so it's like more polite way. And the last one will be how does Ayman sign off? You can refer to at the end there. Okay, so and also I would like my students to go through it. Okay, you look at the sample format of a semi-formal email. Mm -hmm. Normally you will have two. And then for this one, you have to refer to the email address of your person, the persons that you're going to write to. And then the subject, just a very short one, a very direct one, and then um, address to who, and then your information, your purpose of writing this email, and then what kind of information you want, and last is your sign off. Okay, so keep in mind this because you're going to have another practice that I want you to try, okay, which is this one. All right, 
So this is the questions. It's also in your textbook, which is on page 87. Okay, you can look at this. Sign up for an unforgettable experience. It's about calving adventure, I guess. So this geology club is organizing a calving trip, a one-day calving trip. You have the contact information down there. So write an email to Mr. Trenton giving any necessary information about yourself and asking for the information you want. So maybe you can ask about the price of the calving trips or whether the lunch is provided or not. Or do you need to bring any special equipment? Okay? So keep in mind of this and try to write it out. So later I'm going to ask for your response for this. Okay, okay. so I guess even the people watching at home or the students watching yeah, at home can, uh, can also jot this down. Try to prepare your answer and maybe during uh, the lesson later if we have enough yes. time, we are able to go through properly and you can compare your answers and see whether those answers are similar to what we'll be presenting later. And hopefully by then you can also see what or whether or not your, your answers are, well, are in line with what we are looking for. Yeah. And uh, while, well, while waiting for that or while waiting for that to happen, we're going to give you some time. We're going to take a short break and we're back to you for Road to Success SPM 2021. TV KPM Apa itu disinfeksi? Disinfeksi merupakan tindakan pembersihan permukaan yang tercemar dengan kuman menggunakan bahan disinfeksi komersial yang mengandungi 70% alkohol, cecair pelutur yang mengandungi 5% kepekatan sodium hypochlorite atau sabun pencuci. Permukaan yang kerap disentuh dan perlu dilakukan disinfeksi adalah tombol atau pemegang pintu, susur tangga, singki, kepala paip, suis lampu, pemegang flash tandas, meja, butang lift, kerusi dan sofa. Alatan yang perlu disediakan termasuklah mop, baldi, kain lap, bahan disinfeksi komersial, air, botol penyembuh, sarung tangan getah, penutup hidung dan mulut dan penyedut habuk. Terdapat pelbagai jenis bahan disinfeksi komersial dan penggunaannya adalah berpandukan kepada label pada botol. Contohnya, sukatan untuk cecair peluntur adalah 1 liter cecair peluntur ditambah dengan 9 liter air. Persediaan pelindungan diri sebelum memulakan disinfeksi. Cuci tangan dengan air dan sabun. Pakai sarung tangan getah dan pakai penutup mulut dan hidung. Disinfeksi boleh dilakukan secara lap, mop atau semburan. Disinfeksi secara lap dan mop dilakukan dengan cara pergerakan sehala. Peringatan Pastikan anda tidak menambah bahan lain ke dalam cecair disinfeksi bagi mengelak tindak balas yang tidak diingini. Setiap bancuan cecair disinfeksi hanya boleh digunakan sekali. Cuci tangan sebelum dan selepas melakukan disinfeksi. Buka tingkap untuk aliran udara selepas melakukan disinfeksi. Didik TV KPM Assalamualaikum. I'm Puan Nurizan Mahari, a biology teacher at SMJK Yokuan and also a mother to Amiru Shazwan, an SPM candidate for 2021. My biggest hope as a mother is for him to achieve excellent result for his upcoming SPM. May this pandemic not be a challenge for all of the candidates to get a good result. Thank you. And we are back for SPM, sorry, Road to Success, SPM 2021. Together with me, Sean Steven and also Miss Sim. All right, Miss Sim, let's continue our lesson. Right. Yeah. So before we continue with a semi-formal email, okay. I would like to touch a little bit on uh, informal email. Okay. Because sometimes uh, for the questions, okay, it might come up with uh, informal. So I just want to let the students know how does it look like. Okay. okay, so we will go through a little bit. So let's look at this. This is uh, taken from one of the model questions. So, and I modify a little bit. So we can see that this is on part one. 
You must answer this question. That means you need to do this. You cannot skip this. And then the questions one, you receive an email from your cousin, Jesse, who is interested in joining the SAM Mathematics tuition class with you. So this is how uh, she wrote the reply. Uh, she wrote the email to you. Okay, so hi, it was great to hear that your mathematics has so much improvement recently. I would like to join your maths tuition class as you know that I'm not good in calculating. Where shall I go and when should I register for the class? What should I bring for my first class? I'll be waiting for your reply. Bye. Okay, so if you can see that I have uh, bold the words here. Show you guess like what is the purpose of this? Or, yeah. uh, just to highlight um, the information that you are asking, or that person is asking her, I think her cousin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So this is the part where students really have to pay attention. Okay. I just uh, need to uh, say it again because this is very important. You need to answer these three questions in your. SPM writing paper, especially ah, for email. Okay. So if you miss one question of this, you cannot score full marks. Oh no. So in order to score full marks, you must answer all these three questions. Okay. Because for email, it's quite easy to score 20 marks if you answer all the questions oh, properly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's very important to identify all the questions they ask. So first thing is where shall I go? The mm -hmm. second is when should I register for the class and the third is what should I bring for my first class. That means in your email you must put all these information. Ah. Yeah. All right. So you will get an answer sheet something like this. Okay, okay they have provide the template for you. You just have to fill in the email address and then the subject. Mm -hmm. The subject can be a very simple one like um uh, yeah. I don't want to give the answer. I want to ask my students okay. like what kind of subject they think is suitable for this. So can I ask someone like maybe Kongzi, what kind of subject do you think is suitable for this? Refer to the previous one, the mathematics tuition class like this. Okay, so what do you think would be suitable for this subject? For the subject, I think I will write a mathematics tuition class. Oh, just very straightforward, is it? Mathematics tuition class? Yeah? Yes. Yes? I think, yeah? Okay. It's all right. How about Maha? Maha, would you like to try? What would you put? Maybe I'll put recommendation for mathematics tuition class. Recommendations? Because you're recommending where, when, and what should uh, your cousins bring, right? Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so it's just a very short one. Okay. Just like a title like that. Okay, and then you write your email. And informal email is also same like the semi-formal email. All the things are the same. Oh, it's okay. just that uh, it's a little bit more informal. You can yeah. just say hi or bye or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to our topic today: a semi-formal email. So like just now, I mentioned about the reply from uh, Ima Megat. Okay. So I would like to ask my students. How does Ayman address the person he's writing to? And this is also very important yeah, for all the uh, students at home. Okay, please keep in mind because when you write an email, you must address the persons that you are writing to yes. in a, a proper way, and especially the names. Don't uh, write the wrong names. Oh, right? yes, 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 very okay. important. So uh, for question number one, who would like to try this? Anyone of my students? Me, me too. Oh, Kaching. Okay, so Kaching. How does Aima address the person he's writing to? He addresses the person as Miss Samad. Miss Samad, yes. Okay, Miss Samad. Okay. Yeah. The second question, how about another student? What information does Aiman give about himself? Any volunteer? Me, I'll let to try. Okay, Jing Sen. From the letter, he gives information about his full name, his okay. age, and his interest about cycling. Yeah, right. His full names, his age, and then his interests. Okay. So question number three. What information does Ayman ask for? Okay, this is all very important, yeah? And any volunteer? Me, Jamin. Jamin, okay. So what kind of information that uh, Ayman would like to know? In paragraph three, Ayman asks about the amount of registration fees, mm -hmm. time to pay the fees, and whether the club has prepared has provided any 
tra training for bike ride or not. Yes, yeah, because nice. he would like to know whether the club has provided any training or not, right? Yes. How about questions number four? Does he use direct or indirect questions? Kingi, would you like to try this? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I think he uses both direct and indirect questions. Direct and indirect questions, right? Because here we can see that I would like to know is something like indirect, right? In a more polite way. And then direct is uh, when will I have to pay it, right? Okay, next, the last one, last questions. How does Ayman sign off? Guangzhou, maybe you can answer uh -huh. this? Yes, I can answer this. Mm -hmm. I'm signed up with your sincerely followed by his full name. Yes, your sincerely followed by Iman Maggots. Yes, correct. So these are the formats that you have to keep in mind. All right. So two, you need to write email address. Yeah, two is writing down the email address, not the name, because I have some of my students. Yes. They just uh, write actually, the name. Yes, I was just about to ask that. So for the email address, yeah. do we just make something up, or how do yeah. we write the email? Address? Uh, this one refer back to the previous slide and the yeah. contact information there. Ah, they yes. actually provide it. Okay, but okay. for example, like if uh, in your SPM paper, they mm -hmm. didn't provide any, mm -hmm. you can just create your own. Just make sure that the name is correct. Yeah. Like Sarah Samad, you don't put your own name there. Okay, got yeah. It. And then the subject is the one that I say, just keep it short mm -hmm. and make sure it's related to the content of the email. Okay. And then we need to uh, start with the addressing of uh, Ms. Samad. Mm -hmm. And then you give your purpose of writing this email and then your information and the information you would like to know. And the last but not least, you must also remember to sign off with your sincerely and then you put down your name and have to put your full name your prop, uh, is in the proper way yep. because I know like some of my students they would just put strawberry they thought it's just a nickname uh -huh, but okay, no so. yeah I have to put your full name okay that yes is. because this is also a semi-formal so yeah, have so to be a little bit formal it's, it's, yeah it has to yes. follow some form, yeah formality. so all this yeah okay all right so next Let's move on to the second practice, um, which is uh, writing about an email to Mr. Trenton about the Kevin Avenger. This is the previous one that I have shown to you. Okay, so you have the email address here. Remember, edwardtrentons at mail.com, right? So let's listen to our students' responses because we cannot see their writing, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, let's listen to them. This is like some sort of the format you're supposed to have, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Who would like to start first with the two subject and then the ad, um, address to who and then maybe talk a little bit about the introductions? Anyone? Me, Guangzhi. Guangzhi? Okay, Guangzhi. Let's try. For the two, mm -hmm. I will write... Mr. Edward Treden in your address, which is edwardtreden at mail.com. Yes, okay, this one, for, yeah. For the subject, I will put a Kevin trip. A Kevin trip, okay. Mm -hmm. Dear Mr. Edward Treden, mm -hmm. I saw the announcement about one day trip to Crystal Cave on my school notice board. Mm -hmm. I'm always been fond of outdoor activities. So I'm very interested in participating in this trip. All right, thank you. So you set your purpose as well, right? You would like to take part in this trip. Okay, good, very good. So how about the next students? Can you share with us uh, your writing about giving your own information because you would like Mr. Trenton to know about your information, right? So anyone would like to try this? Any volunteer? Um, me, Maha. Okay, Maha. Mm. My name is uh, Jessica and I'm 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm not a member of Geography Club and I have never taken part in any Geography event. Okay. As I am very keen to know about the cave system, I think this is a good opportunity to join the club and take part in the one-day trip to Crystal Cave. All right, thank you. So Maha also mentions that she never has such experience because here, in the questions, it says that you need to say whether you have any previous Kevin experience or not. Ah. Because sometimes students will like miss this 
because this is yeah. the one that they have to give. Like I say, you need to give all the information they mm -hmm. ask, right? Yeah. So sometimes they will miss this. So make sure you read back again all the questions they are asking. Yeah. So make sure you have all the answers. Uh, so that means, if let's say for example, they ask yeah. to give name, name age, age say yes. whether you have done it or not. Uh, yeah. but, well, what happens if we were to uh, give any other information that... It, it's, it's okay. It's Extra okay. information is okay, but okay. just that you don't miss any information that they ask. Right, okay. to get a full score. All right. Okay, so move on. Let's have another student to share with us um, about what kind of information you would like to ask, okay, if you would like to join this calving trip. Um, can I have another student? Who would like to try this? Me, teacher, I would like to try. Okay, Jinxian. However, I would like to have some information about the caving adventure. Firstly, I would like to know about how much will the trip cost as it is not mentioned in the announcement. I'm also wondering whether lunch will be provided during the trip. Okay, so you have that too. All right, the first one. Okay, let's look, go back to the questions. All right, so you asked about the price, you asked about the lunch. Okay, how about the special equipment? Maybe we have another student to share with us and then make the conclusions and then you sign off, okay? So, anyone would like to try? Me, Jamin. Jamin, okay, Jamin. Uh, beside, do I need to prepare any special equipment for the trip? Mm -hmm. Since I do not have any previous cabin experience, please reply me earlier so that I can prepare the needed equipment. For the conclusion, Looking forward to your reply. Thank you. And your sincerely, Jessica. All right, thank you. But you didn't write for your for the conclusion in your writing, right? <laughs> I just oh, want just to double confirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, did you write? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Noah, just to make sure you didn't no, write no. for the conclusions. Yeah, okay, because we no need to write that. You just say, okay, looking forward to your reply or what, right? Okay, yeah, that's good. So you actually follow exactly the same like the previous um, reply from Iman's, right? So this is, if you can see, email is very easy to score, yes. okay? Because in about 80 words only, mm -hmm. okay? Then just make sure you know the email address or you correct one, and then make sure your subject is clear and related to the content. And you have the persons that you're going to write to, and you sign off with your name, and the information is here all depends on your SPM questions in the paper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess uh, this is I actually the have format. a question. So, yeah. for, for this uh, essay in particular, yeah, mm -hmm. um, it has to be not more than 80 words. But what if we exceed those 80 words? Um, actually, if you exceed a little bit, it's fine. Yeah. Or if you exceed a lot, there is no rules that you cannot exceed a lot. Mm -hmm. But you need to keep in mind that you only have one hour and 30 minutes for three essay. Ah, so yes, I would suggest true. students to only uh, roughly write around 80 to 90 words like yeah. that mm -hmm. because you need to have more time for the, another two the essays at the back. Well, yeah. Yeah. But also and to ensure that we hit every information that's yes, needed. Yes, you just have to make sure you have all the information in there, mm -hmm. make sure your grammar is correct, then everything will be fine. Alright. Yeah, you'll get a full marks. Thank you so much, Miss Sim. And of course, uh, before we continue, how about we take a short break and we'll be back for you for Road to Success SPM 2021. Stay tuned. Dedek TV KPM Bagaimana COVID-19 merebak? Situasinya begini. Terdapat empat watak dalam situasi ini iaitu Ali, Bob, Chen dan Dewi. Ali telah dijangkiti COVID-19. Ali mudah untuk dikesan kerana menunjukkan gejala jangkitan pernafasan. Ali keluar berjumpa Chen. Mereka bersalaman. Peluang untuk Chen dijangkiti sangat tinggi. Chen juga berpotensi menjangkiti orang lain. Ali dan Chen mudah dikenal pasti melalui pengesanan kontak, dikuarantin dan dirawat. Dalam perjalanan Ali untuk berjumpa Chen, Ali terbatuk ke arah Bob dan berlakunya jangkitan COVID-19 kepada Bob tanpa disedari. Masalah di sini, bagaimana untuk mengesan Bob dan kontak Bob? Bob dan kontaknya tidak sedar yang mereka telah dijangkiti dan berpotensi menyebarkan COVID-19 kepada orang lain walaupun tidak bergejala. Jika Bob dan kontak Bob mula menunjukkan gejala COVID-19 dalam tempoh 14 hari, mereka wajib ke pusat saringan serta mendapatkan rawatan. 
rantaian jangkitan COVID-19 dapat diputuskan. Dewi pula hanya duduk di rumah membeli barangan keperluan atas talian dan berkomunikasi dengan rakan melalui alat telekomunikasi. Jika Dewi keluar rumah dan tidak mengamalkan langkah-langkah pencegahan, Dewi juga mungkin mendapat jangkitan. Tempoh 14 hari merupakan inkubasi COVID-19. Langkah pencegahan yang boleh diambil adalah kerap cuci tangan dengan sabun dan air atau gunakan hand sanitizer. Jarakkan diri sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter daripada individu lain. Hadkan interaksi dengan orang lain, termasuk ahli keluarga atau rakan. Langkah-langkah pencegahan adalah penting untuk memutuskan rantaian jangkitan COVID-19. KPM. Salam sejahtera semua. Nama saya Tia Leping. Anak saya Encing Leng. Harapan saya terhadap anak saya sewaktu SPM diberi kesihatan yang baik, ketenangan dan kebijaksanaan untuk menjawab soalan SPM dan seterusnya mencapai impian anak saya. And we are now in the final quarter for Road to Success SPM 2021. Together with me, Sean Stephen, as your host and our teacher for today, Miss Sim. Now, I have a question for all our students who are online or pupils who are online. Uh, are you able to cope so far? Is everything okay? You have any questions you'd like to ask? Because we are actually approaching towards the end of the show for today. All good? All good? Okay, yeah, it looks like uh, whatever they have explained, I mean, same, uh, seems to be reaching out to us. And hopefully for those of you who are watching at home as well, uh, you get to uh, somehow capture and also uh, understand what is uh, being uh, ex um, what we call uh, explained to you so far. So uh, just before we end, we're going to just do a recap of what we have studied for today. So over yeah. to you, Miss Sim. All right. Okay, so this is a summary of what we have learned today. Mm -hmm. Remember the learning objective that I say that the first one is people will identify the two important parts. That okay. means you need to address it, uh, how are you going to start your email. Mm -hmm. You need to address the persons correctly. And the second thing will be how are you going to uh, end the email is to sign off, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So that is the format of a semi-formal email. You have to always keep in mind all those uh, important things, right? And then the second one is uh, we have to uh, learn uh, how to identify the information that they are asking for, so that we can give the proper information that they want. Yeah. Right. And don't miss out any information. Okay. And we also can ask for some other information that we think might be important if we want to join uh, for their activities or something like that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, let's move on. Okay. So this is uh, briefly about a semi-formal letter or email. So. It's actually written to a person you know, but actually you are not very close to them. They are not your friend. Maybe it's just or a relative. They are just like someone you need to uh, asking Ask about. about. Yeah. yeah. Yes. For example, like when you showed an example of the uh, uh, informal uh, email. Yes. Uh, for example, that uh, for that particular example, uh, you were explaining about how or how that person would uh, ask his or her. I think it was her cousin, yeah. uh, Jessica. Um, on the, the type of uh, items to bring for the mathematics yes. class and all that. So the type, or you can see the style of writing is different because it's someone that you know and yeah. you know how that person would react to, to your style of writing as compared to someone that you don't know. Obviously, you have to be a bit more courteous. You have to ensure that the language you use is proper because what you want at the end of the day is the information that you want to ask that person. Yes, and yeah. try to be in a more polite way. All right. Yeah. yeah. And then you can begin with like, for example, if you know their names, you can put dear, Mr, Miss, Mrs, okay? But if you are not sure about their name, maybe their surnames mm -hmm. or their first name, or if they do not give any, you yeah. can just uh, put any that you think is suitable for it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you can just create one. There's the, there is uh, something that I've learned in school, but I just want to reconfirm with you. Mm -hmm. That, for example, like for men, it's very easy to, to say Mr. because that applies to both uh, married and unmarried yeah. men. Yeah. But for females, there's two types. as Miss and Mr. So how do we use that? 
Yeah, okay, for missus, normally someone who is married, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, we'll refer it as missus. But for miss, normally it's for a single lady or, yeah, who is not married yet. Yeah. For, for example, yeah. like Miss MS is, uh, can be used as a general uh, term for, for all women? Um, or... You may, yeah. if you are not sure whether that person Correct. is yes. married or not, right? Yes. Or, yes. But normally we will use madam. Madam. Okay. Yeah, madam. Just to be safe. Uh, yeah, just, just to be safe up. because you are not sure whether it's a miss or not, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll put madam, it will be a more polite way. Okay. And yeah. then, um, yeah, and also you end with your sincerely. Or you can put all the best, or you can put best wishes. But you don't just say bye and then your names, or or sometimes students will not write any of this. They will just straight away write their names. Oh no, yeah. they might lose marks there, so, right? So, um, not really, but it will carry for the language style, like whether your language is suitable or appropriate or not. Uh, okay. So yeah, from there. So have to be careful, like this one. Just stick to one. Maybe you can just memorize ones like yeah. yours uh, sincerely, your sincerity. that one. Right? I think that's very also very, very applicable common. to our current times. Even me yes. as, a, as, as an adult right now, when I write emails to ask about anything or to get mm -hmm. more information, uh, I will always sign off with uh, yours sincerely because that's yes. the most, uh, how to say, commonly used yeah. and it wouldn't offend anyone. Yes, yeah. that is true. Okay. So let's go to when asking for and giving information. First thing, like we keep on mentioning it okay stress on it is we need to write it in an appropriate style okay yeah. so make sure it's an appropriate style you don't just start with hi bro or something like that it sounds <laughs> so like informal yes, right yeah. yeah and then you need to make sure the persons that you're writing to is it close to you or not is it an informal or formal so they will not tell you this is a formal or semi-formal or informal you have to identify it by yourself ah, okay, yes okay Okay, and then you have to cover all the points, means uh, all the information they are asking for. Yep. You have to organize the information in paragraphs. Mm -hmm. You don't just write everything in one paragraph. Yeah, I think yeah, that's it's for... very hard to identify yeah. it. That's, just, that's for two reasons. Number one, like you mentioned, is to identify the points. For example, mm -hmm. this is your introduction or this yes. is your information Make that you want clear. to tell to them. Because yeah. if you put it all into one big paragraph, not only are we not able to identify the points, but it also looks very tiring to the yes. eyes. Imagine for a person like me who, uh, yeah. you know, read on a uh, don't, don't read on a daily basis, and suddenly I see like uh, everything lumped up into one big yes. paragraph. It'll be uh, quite demotivating to read, and you want to be on the good, on good terms with the yeah. examiner or the the person the, who marks the, marker, the paper, right? right? So you want to make it as pleasant as possible. Yes, yeah. and then you need to make sure that they can identify all your points. Like if not, they will miss your point. Although you have written it, maybe sometimes they just miss it. So you need to make sure they read it. Okay. Yeah. So and then we use the standard grammar and spelling like usual. Mm -hmm. A combination of direct and indirect questions. Use the appropriate phrases to express enthusiasms. Like ah. you need to tell them you really want to join this. Like I'm very interested in it. I'm very keen on it. Or I think this is a good opportunity for me. And I was excited to hear that. Or I have always been fond of. Just to let them know you really want to join this, so that they can reply you as soon as possible. Yes. yes yeah. That's great. Um, and yeah. I think uh, it's, it's very nice that you also included uh, all these appropriate phrases because sometimes mm -hmm. if we use the, the, same, uh, the yes. same kind of, of yeah, sentence, that's why I put a phrase, feel. every time it might seem a bit boring or mm -hmm. if let's say you have to do, you never know that uh, the email has a, a quite a similar theme as to right. your essays and when the person marks it, they might see a repetition, even though it might not uh, affect something, but it's yeah. also good to know all these different terms that we can use, whether it's writing email or even other essays that we might touch yes. later for other episodes. And very important to give a better impressions, a great impressions for the marketer to, yes. to read your email so that you can get a higher score maybe? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, that's true. Okay. All right. And so, I think uh, right now, uh, what we can do is maybe you can also give us a summary or some tips mm -hmm. on our subject for today or our topic for today writing. for, for our students uh, watching okay. at home. Yeah, so for writing, actually, the the one thing that I keep on stressing on, my, uh, on this paper is you need to be aware of the time. Because yeah. this new format, you only have one hour and 30 minutes for three essays. Wow. So yes. that is so stressful. Even for teachers, we also think like uh, it's very rushing. Mm -hmm. Okay. For a good student, maybe it's okay because once they look at the question, they can straight away answer it. Yeah. But some students, they need to plan. They yes. need to think about it. So it takes some time. So what I think, what I would suggest is 
you try to get a shorter time for your email mm -hmm. and you give more time to the second part and the third part of the essay because you need to write more words. For the first one, you only have 80 words. Yes. The second is roughly like 125 to 150. Mm -hmm. But the last one, you need to write about like 200 to 250. So it will be more, you need to spend more time on that. Yeah. Yeah. So that will be very challenging. So you just have to read the questions carefully. The second tip is read the questions carefully. Mm -hmm. Because some of my students, I, uh, I don't know, maybe they are nervous or what. I got one student when our topic is about recycling, yeah. somehow he wrote to me cycling. So, and then he talked about cycling is a good form of exercise or something like that. Yeah. But the topic is recycling. So you have to talk about recycling. It's That's nothing true. to do with cycling. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. okay. There was a misconception there. Yes. misunderstanding. Maybe like recycling and cycling, right? Somehow he, he I don't know how he can confuse oh, about no. it. Yeah, yeah, but after he wrote everything, then he just realized, he looked back at the questions again, and it is recycling. So I would suggest like, you don't wait until you finish writing. You can like just write the first intro and yep. go back and check the questions again. Yes. Yeah, yes. to make sure you're aligned with the questions. I think something that I can add on to that is to mm -hmm. highlight key points in that question so yes. that you are able to know and throughout that uh, writing yes. aside, right? They, they can know. underline it or circle it. Correct, yes. correct, correct. Yes, and uh, thank you so much for your yeah. tips and hopefully those of you watching at home are able to use these tips. I know uh, it's definitely useful because I sat through SPM and I, <laughs> and I know this is very, very relatable. When you are sitting for an exam, you feel very stressed, you feel very nervous, uh, nervous right. and you tend to miss out on this. So with more practice and as that saying goes, planning to fail, uh, sorry, failing to plan <laughs> is planning to fail. So it's always yeah. good to plan your time ahead, of, uh, plan your, your, your timing properly so that you are able to touch all three questions within the uh, one and a half hours. And thank you again, Miss Sim, right. for sharing all these tips and also this knowledge with us today. And also thank you to our students who are online with us right now, Ke Ching, uh, King Yi, Jia Min, Kuang Zhe, Jiang, uh, Jing Xian, and Maha Lechumi for being with us today. And uh, please do, uh, uh, hopefully for those of you watching at home, hopefully you get or get benefits from our lesson today. And also for those of you who are watching, make sure you always follow the SOPs in place in our battle against COVID-19 to flatten the curve. And we'll see you in our next episode for Road to Success, SPM 2021. Until then, bye-bye and stay safe.